everybody. Welcome again to um, Communion, Candles and Communion. Um, I have not been on here for a while because it's just been a lot of shit's been happening, so I've taken a little break. Um, I feel like in the um, Christian community, there's been a lot of shifting that's happening. Um, over the course of the couple months, you know, prior, there have been a lot of attacks on Christian community. Um, and so oh, I feel like people have been going through the Job experience, but now God is like shifting and doing things for people to um, basically get the double for their trouble, what they've been going through. So it's a lot of shifting. So people have been shifting to other churches, or jobs, shifting money, ministry, business. So it's been a lot of shifting. So I've been basically, you know, prostrate before God and praying and basically seeking his face and, yeah, all of that. So that is why I have not been on here. But um, I'm back, and I have so many revelations. It's good to get before God because he pours into you, and then when he pours into you, you are able to um, deliver, basically. So... Let's start off with prayer, and then we will dig into what God has given me. Thank you, God, for your love and kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for waking us up today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, and we'll be glad in it. Thank you for um, giving us breath in our lungs, a place to lay our, our head. Thank you for the food in our belly. Thank you for the job that we have. Thank you for the health. Thank you for our body, which is a temple for you, God. I pray, the Lord, as we dig into the word today, that, Lord, you just um, give us revelation of the revelation of what we need to know. I pray against any distractions of the enemy. I pray, the Lord, you just silence the voice of the enemy and open our hearts, open our minds, open our soul to what you have given me to receive and also for everybody to receive, Father. I pray, the Lord, let us be doers of your word and not hearers only. I pray that every distraction will cease. Um, let us be in tune. Take over our minds, give us peace, that surpasses the understanding, give us joy, and give us calmness, God, in our hearts and our souls. So I pray and I dedicate this time to, with, to you, God, in the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so, um, if you're joining, I think the last time I posted, I posted about um, being in transition, uh, basically being in the pruning season. Yeah, so if you're in a pruning season, hold on, press on. You know, take time to just be before God, ask God for direction. Because He never leave you astray, He never leave you confused. Um, ask God for direction, He will give it to you. Um, pray for the people that are around you. Pray for the people that are around you because when the enemy cannot touch you, um, what it does is that it will try and touch those around you. You know, maybe your job or your place of living, or your family, or your friends, or your husband, whatever. The enemy cannot touch you, so they touch things around you. So pray, and, you know, let God handle what you cannot handle. All right? So, yeah. So thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. We're going to dig into it today. We're going to look at Matthew 25, um, verse um, 1 to... 14. So God, what God is giving me is revelation about the parable of the wedding banquet. Um, so we're going to talk about that today. All right, parable of the wedding banquet. So um, basically, I'm going to read what the Bible says about it. So and then we're going to dig into it like step by step. So um, parable of the wedding banquet. So I'm just going to read it. So um, today. Bible verse is called um, Matthew 22. Um, basically, it's called um, the feast. So that's what the Bible verse. Our Bible study today is the feast. Are you ready for the feast? Basically. Um, so Matthew 25, um, 1 to 14. So um, turn your Bible to Matthew 25. Wait, hold on. No, not Matthew 25. Excuse me. Matthew 22, Matthew 22, sorry. So Matthew 22, 1 to 14, all right? The parable of the wedding banquet, Matthew 22. 
So Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. The, um, his, his, he sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corner and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the, so the servants went out into the street and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes he asked how did you get in here without wearing clothes friend the man was speechless then the king told the attendants tie him tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth of teeth for my for, for many are invited but a few are chosen so again the bible wrote Bible study today is on Matthew 22, 1 to 14, and the, um, the title of Bible, Bible study is Feast. Are you ready for the feast? Um, so God has been speaking to me about this specific um, Bible chapter and also Bible verse. Um, what we're going to be looking at is Luke 13, 22 to 28, and also Romans 3. Romans 14, 10, Romans 5, 8, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, Luke 10, 38 to 42. So don't worry, I will re-mention all of this again, so don't worry about it. Um, so let's dig into what is being said right now. Um, so I'm just going to look and see. All right, let's see. All right, so first it says... Matthew 22, 1. Uh, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. So it says Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, God, Jesus always spoke in parables um, because he spoke in parables because um, in parables, he made it, it so that it's more understanding. Um, I believe that he spoke in parables because that was a way for people to be more um, comprehensive of what he was saying. And he used the things that are happening in that day to um, give them understanding. So basically, parables are like... It's, it's like so Jesus used the wedding banquet because, you know, at that time, people were like, what? These two people were getting married. So he used that as a, an analogy to, to tell them about, you know, what revelations that he was having, that God was giving him. Um, and I think that it's brilliant because it allows us to use the word to um, reflect on our own lives, basically. So um, he said on... He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. So what God is telling me about this specific um, verse is that the kingdom of heaven is like a king. The king is God who prepared a wedding banquet. The wedding banquet is the church, the bride. The, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the church is a bride, the, the bride to Christ. You know, when he comes, he's going to come back for his bride. And he says, you know, um, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. And his son is Jesus, you know. So 
Basically, God prepared a wedding banquet, which is the bride for his son, Jesus. So when you go to verse 3, it says, He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. So he sent his servants. His servants are basically you and I. Um, his servants are the chosen people, the Christians, the called. Those are his servants. Um, and he called them to who have been invited so the invitation is basically salvation invitation is being invited to come and be at the banquet which is the church um to come and see, have a seat at a table at a church so we are you know the servants we are to go forth and invite those who have been invited to bring those who have been invited to come and have a seat at a banquet the banquet being at the church. But sometimes when we go forth, for example, evangelists, evangelists go forth and try to invite people to the church, to the banquet, to sit at the table where God is. Sometimes the people will refuse when you go in, if you've ever been to um, evangelize at a, you know, at a retreat or at a, a place wherever God leads you to evangelize. You can evangelize at your job church maybe your church you pick a location and go there and tell people about god but you know when they when you get there not everybody's gonna listen to you right like how jesus came not everybody listened to jesus so of course not everybody's gonna listen to you some people will refuse to come and that's okay you cannot force anybody into salvation it is a willingness it's a willingness to want to be want to know who god is so then uh when you go to verse four he said then he sent some more servants you know, sometimes God will send more servants to you um, when you to, to the lost because God is not just going to give up on us. He says he leaves the 99 for the one, right? So he's going to continue to try and send more people for your help, for the help that you need. God will always send people to um, help somebody meet salvation or come back to God. Any backsliders, anybody that is sinful, God will continually send people. But sometimes we are set in our ways that we don't want to, you know, follow and go back to where God is sending us to go. But, you know, in verse 4, it tells you that God is not going to give up on us. He doesn't just give up. He will always continue to try and knock at our hearts, send the right people. It's up to us to say yes or no because he's not going to force you. So he sent some more servants, verse 4, and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. So basically, hello, I have set the table. I have made the place. I am inviting you to come and sit at the table. So it's an invitation. Um, this is what I've prepared for you. I have an oxen and fattened cattle. He has all the feet, all the food that you need, everything that you need. He has it there. All he's doing is waiting for you to come. So, as servants, we know what the table has because we already have a seat at a table. So, we already know what the table consists of. So, when we go into the places that God sent us, we go and tell people, hey, there's a wedding banquet happening. There's a, a banquet happening. Um, God is calling you to his bride, to, to, you know, to the church. There's oxen. There's fattened cattle. You are not going to leave hungry. You know, because the, the Bible says that you know when we drink from, from when we drink from the well, we will never be thirsty because it quenches our soul. It quenches every thirst that we have. The more you feed on the word, the less the less you are thirsty for anything else in the world. Right? Um, verse five it says, but they paid no attention and went off. So they paid no attention and went off because they were. Um, busy with your own things you know the bible says that you know um, we are some people are going to be so busy in the world that they will lose your soul what profit what profit a man when he he has everything but loses his soul you know so basically what are you so busy about are you busy about god or are you busy about your own agenda that's what it's saying. That but they paid no attention. They went off, and it's like one of his field. One. So it, they went off. One to go and tend to their field, and another to their business. 
you know, one thing is, every morning I wake up, I always say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, there's a day that Lord has made, I will rejoice in it. I always ask the God, I always ask God, what, what are we doing today? What are we going to be doing today? Um, if honestly, if they, they dedicate their life or they dedicate it to a day to God, they would not have just paid no attention, you know? Because when you fellowship with God every day, you're going to realize what if God, who, who God is sending and who God is not sending. Um, so one of them went to their field and the other one said business. You know? And it says, verse 6, the rest seized his servants. So some of them paid no attention and the rest captured the servants. So and mistreated them and killed them. So um, basically saying that some of us who are Christians are going to be mistreated when we go and share the word, when we go and talk about the invitation of God to people who are in need of God. Some of them, us might be might, you know, mistreated. Some of us might be killed. But the Bible says that, you know, when you are persecuted for, for the sake of Christ, there is a reward in heaven for you. Um, so don't be afraid. Um, verse 7, it says, the God is going to take vengeance when you, we are mistreated, when his people, his servants, his children, his chosen generations are mistreated. He doesn't sit well with that. But you have to know that vengeance belongs to the Lord. So he, verse 7 says, Matthew 22, 7 says, The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. Again, God will take vindication because he will not allow his treated and killed um, so so be courage be of good courage you know keep on letting God use you don't be uh, dismayed don't be discouraged when you meet people who might mistreat you because you are so passionate about